after dealing with elastic collision, of course we have to go and talk about inelastic collision. And inelastic, all it means is that the total kinetic energy is somehow greater than the final kinetic energy. Some energy was lost. It's an inequality, we can't do very much with it, so we have to give you other information. In this case, they give us very specifically that the final speed is a certain amount. And in fact, in this case, because we're only considering the ball, there's also an, an external force on the ball, so even the momentum is not going to be constant because there's an external impulse. But let's kind of tally things up using my time one and two diagram. So my V1, let's go to three meters per second. And we'll call this positive X in this case because that's why I started. And then a little later, it's gonna be negative 2.4 meters per second. And the thing to be very aware here is Unlike the previous cases of collisions, we're only looking at just one part of the collision as our system. So then whatever force the bumper pushes on to the ball, that's considered an external force. So when we write our sum of P1 plus delta P1 to 2 external, equals the sum of momentum at time two, this is no longer zero because we actually have an external force. In fact, that's what they're asking us for here. So we can expand this out. We have mv1 plus force times delta t is equal to mv2. For part A, they want the force. To solve for the force, Really, it is as simple as rearranging to isolate F, plugging in numbers, and kind of factor out the mass. Final velocity is negative, initial velocity is positive, all divided by the time which they tell us. We're, of course, assuming that the force is constant or we're using the average force for the whole time, just to make the math simple. And so on top, we end up with some amount of momentum over seconds. And so kilogram meters per second square, that's a Newton. The force comes out to negative 86.4 Newtons because we have to find positive that way, the force is clearly going opposite to that. Which all makes sense. As long as you keep the sign consistent, it'll give you the right answer. So the pretty answer is that you're talking about 86.4 Newton perpendicular and away from the bumper. Part B here, they're talking about the energy lost. So here we have to deal with energy, and since we're assuming the table is flat, let's care only about the kinetic energy. Somehow energy was removed from the system, and of course we know that that happens only by you doing some kind of work. So whatever this work term ends up to be, that is our energy lost. So let's solve for this work term. Ke2 minus Ke1, no surprise there, final energy minus initial energy. The only energy we got to care about is my kinetic energy, which we have the speeds for. So that's 1 half 0 0.24 kilograms times my initial, sorry, my final speed, which is negative. I could have dropped the negative, there's a meter per second in there. And that's three meters per second all square. And I end up with a negative number as I expect.
And so we're doing negative work, therefore losing energy in the system of that much. And that's kind of my answer for, for part B. For part C, very, very similar. They want the percentage that is left. So they want, oops, the final divide by the original instead, because sometimes that's more useful to talk about. And so we have one half, 0 0.240 kg. In fact, that can kind of just cancel out top and bottom. And we find that it's 0 0.64 or so, which is equal to 64%. We were able to keep 64% of the energy. So definitely in collision, energy can be lost. And also momentum can change if you don't include both bodies within the collision. And so whatever force happens in the, during the collision, that's an external force, so we have an external impulse.